and then um, Shaba went gold a couple of times. So, um, I mean, a lot of great things were going on then. The only, that's the only thing that's different than what's going on now. Shabarang's success as a dancehall artist sanctioned dancehall on a really important level. Uh, the reggae album Grammy in this country, for instance, had always been given to a melodic artist. And here comes Shaba, proud to call himself Big Dotty Stinking Shaba. So that empowered so many people and encouraged so many people to go into dance hall. I love all the new up and coming artists that have came up after Shaba and Supercat. But the impact that those two DJs made in the urban and hip hop world, I still have not seen another artist that has made it. As far as the loyalty or the respect that you know these producers and these hip hop artists in their world, how much they just love Shaba and Supercat. That was a great time in reggae, but I think what happened was that you had corporations were a little bit greedy, um, there was a bit of a gold rush to grab people up without any real plan of what they were going to do for that artist beyond what they could do for themselves. The kind of unfortunate thing with reggae artists in the early and mid 90s was that they, they were kind of like singles artists, like you would have a shop who would have trailer little girls, but his album wouldn't do as well as, as a particular song. Same thing with Patra, same thing with Aini Kamoji, same thing with um, Maxi Priest. There were these artists who you would know a song, but you, you wouldn't get into an album unless you were into, if you were really into dance hall and kind of really wanted to investigate more about that, that particular genre of music. I see myself as one of the last artists from the old school who had the privilege of going to the dance hall and chatting on a sound system before actually making it into a studio. You know, these artists that came after the 90s or during the 90s, mid-90s, 94, 95, these privileges were locked down. You guys write lyrics and you head straight to the studio and then you just make a hit, you know what I mean? So the whole vibe for these artists changed, you know? And their staying power was even lessened because you didn't have the, the, the same field work to pass that little gray whistle test, as we call it. In the mid-90s, hardcore gangster hip-hop was really taking over, so party music or dance hall or, you know, the, even the more light, the, the more lighter fare and rap music kind of took a back seat to, to, to hardcore hip hop. After disappearing from the musical radar in the mid-90s, it was only a matter of time until reggae made a popular resurgence. The waters were tested at the start of the decade with the huge success of Shaggy, which inspired rock acts like No Doubt to collaborate with Bounty Killer No Less. The time was right for a new breed of acts from Jamaica to bring back the dancehall sound to the radio airwaves once more. The reason why this music is giving so much attention in this time, if you ask me, the people are clamoring for something new. I think that the resurgence of, of reggae is, is interesting because of, of the, the different forms it's now taking. You have the artists who aren't necessarily doing straight dance hall or doing straight reggae. They're infusing various different American musics into their, their own styles. I mean, you have Sean Paul, who obviously has a hip-hop influence to his dance hall. You have Wayne Wonder, who is a bit more melodic and has seemed to have a more of an R&B background. 
the one thing that's um, important for everybody to realize, though, is um, the uh, play that VP Records had in this. You know, dancehall music has, you know, in the early 90s, it was really more of uh, dancehall crossing over with hip-hop artists, a lot of hip-hop beats. But the great thing that happened with uh, a lot of the music that VP Records has put out within the last five to six years, dancehall has actually broken its original form. It's actually Jamaican artists, Jamaican producers. It's not the remixes. It's not the hip-hop artists, which is something that we've worked so hard for. When we go out there and I look at groups and I hear groups, I listen, I listen to how they sound, you know, their look, how they can perform, you know, the dynamics of the stage performance, like Cableton. Cableton can jump like 50,000 feet. He can keep the crowd amped, you know, stuff like that. You can, you know, I basically look at all angles of artists, you know, and then I say, you know, I think this dude is good to go. Let's work with him. The records that are coming out now are really more true to the core fans for reggae. Um, I think when reggae had a resurgence back in the early 90s, I think it was more major labels jumping in and sort of tweaking and changing the music too much where it lost their base. And I think uh, with the resurgence now, I think we've really kept the base still very solid and um, brought the music to a, a much wider audience. And they're accepting it in, in its original form. Don't call it a comeback, because reggae's been here all the while. But um, at the same time, it's just been the magic records. You know, I think by not even trying to cross over, that's when reggae crosses over. If you look at uh, No Letting Go, Wayne Wonder, that is a, you know, uh, a guy that we've been seeing on the reggae scene for many years, Mr. Lanky Marsden, and uh, you know, he hooked up a beat in his house studio in his bedroom, and it's you know on the pop charts right now. Jamaica, we, we do one rhythm and get a lot of like artists to go on the rhythm to get the track like blood like get it out there. Well, I did the track and I was trying to get some artists, but as well, but no one did know me, right? So it's like no one was like Lenky, you know. So I got my like assassin and Zoom J to go on the track. I was going on tour and I just gave like a radio guy to play it. When I came out from tour, everyone was like wanting to go on the track. Lenky called me and say. Yeah, I got this track, you know? My heart was in it because I want him to excel as a producer. So my heart was in it. So he sent me the track, I, you know, vibe it, got my keyboard, you know, jammed to it and, you know, the song, the song, the skin. <laughs> Sean Paul is one of the main players behind the resurgence. His track Give Me The Light raised the profile of homegrown reggae from Jamaica. It demonstrates how dancehall has evolved and reflects hip-hop more closely than at any time previously. Basically it's a party vibe. He's talking about I have my money, uh, no, I'm, you know, I'm in the club tonight, I think I, think I, like, you know, I, li I like the ladies around me, I, I, I want to pop some more, I want to drink, I want to have a good time. That's what the song is about. Give Me The Light. You know, it was a big record, big hit in the clubs, the radio was playing it out here in New York. Then um, we made a video out in Toronto for that record. And when it just hit television, it kind of just blew up, it just took on a whole new life. And people's attention is kind of turning to reggae music again. And, you know, I feel like they, they're seeing what hip hop once had with the dancing and the excitement and the, just all the elements that um, we don't seem to have anymore. So people really see that and, you know, they like it. Young people like it, so if the young kids are behind you, then you can't stop it. Just give me the light and pass the job. Who's another buckle of more? Yeah, let me know my size and I got to know. Which one is going to catch my flow? Because I got the vibes and I got my dough. Who's another buckle of more? Yeah, let me look in the eye and I got to know. The reggae has changed a great deal since I came to America. Because when I first came here, nobody wanted us to play reggae and, and the hear wave. If you do play it as a DJ, you, you have to be careful, you probably lose your job for that. 
Now reggae is all over the airways. Reggae is a, is the thing right now. We've been like the driving force here as far as getting reggae tunes uh, uh, regular uh, airplay, regular rotation airplay. What we're doing is just basically doing our homework, being more on our toes as far as keeping our, you know, uh, music, music and program director up here more abreast on what's hot in the street reggae wise. It's just convincing them to support it right when it comes out, you know, and not waiting for a video to happen or waiting for a concert to come to town for us to play the song.